Mike is uh, over 14 feet long, over 800 pounds, and we're estimating that he's over 50 years old. Hi, my name is Rick Urban. I am the manager of exhibit design and development and animal acquisition here at the Newport Aquarium. This box is, uh, it's a, about an 11 foot box. My mic is still 14 foot long, but he's tail. And that tail you can bend and kind of make him sit there. In the morphology of the crocodile, or in, in our particular mo uh, animal here, Mighty Mike, they have different characteristics, just like we have. We have our nose, we have our teeth, we have our eyes, we have our ears. Well, Mighty Mike's ears are, on reptiles, they are a just a kind of a, a, a gland or a lobe behind the eyes. Um, they, it's, there's a, a portion of the scale that senses the vibrations on that are around him, those acoustical sounds that are around him, and those play off of um, the animal. So he can hear, but it's not going in our ear canal and going in and bouncing around and, and creating that sound that we hear. He can hear those vibrations um, through that little tympanic membrane that's on the behind the ear, uh, behind the eyes. He's going to be hearing through the air and the water. I mean, we all know that sound carries really fast and far through the water. And so that helps out with him hearing you know, below the water surface and, and also above, uh, above the surface. Sometimes he'll give you a little bit of a, a vocalization that it's like, I'm grumpy this morning vocalization. It's, and, and if you ever hear a vocalization from an American alligator like that, it's, it's like hearing a dinosaur. I mean, just the hiss will make the hair stand up on the back of the back. Now that was nice, thank you. They have these really neat teeth and they will go through a, about 3,000 teeth in their lifetime. And you can actually see the serrations on the side of the tooth, but you can see the, how, how blunt they are in, as an individual tooth. And imagine that ball peen hammer like crushing a bone. When they crush into that animal, you, it, you, it almost tells you that when they start to twist and, and, and manipulate that animal, masticate that, that the, the serrated edges will eventually just kind of rip through the skin of the animal. Oh, look, there's a T-Rex tooth in comparison to the tooth of Mighty Mike. Isn't that cool? So, you know, this is a replica of a T-Rex tooth, but this is the actual Mighty Mike tooth. And, but you see on a reptile tooth, you see just the angle on what you, in what you, it sits too, and, and how it grows. And if we look at this this crocodilian tooth, this American alligator tooth, you, when you turn it over and you look down here, you can see the 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 kind of the conical shape and the volcano motion here because there is another tooth pushing underneath of there to come out. So if you look in real close, you see there's a little point in there where that next tooth is right underneath and pushing, pushing it out. When they're when they've grabbed a hold of that uh, prey item and they're thrashing, there's that survival instinct in that prey item that's trying to get away. So the eyes are a sensitive part on the body and being able to have something that's protecting the, the eye really helps out. A lot of animals have that third eyelid. Penguins have a third eyelid. Sharks have that third eyelid. It's the ability to see underwater and protect the eye uh, from that. We. We observed on Mighty Mike the bubbles coming out of the eye. And that is a unique thing as well. And a lot of people have different theories of it. Age could play a part of it. But then there's also, in your skull, you have a series of sinus cavities. And on, a, on alligators, as you age, those sinus cavities will 
allow the ability for water to go in because air is usually in there, right? So we, uh, the water will move into the sinus cavities and especially the ones right off the nose and right behind the eyes, you know, you'll have that, that water go in behind the eye and fill in that sinus cavity. When you're above the water surface, that's fine. You know, air flushes out, air, you know, air will push out the water and such, but then when they sink below, the water now is slipping in to where the air was, and that creates the bubbles, that slow bubbling coming off from both the eyes. When we roll over on our, on, on our back, our brain stays pretty shaped. You know, we always, when we take a blow, it, it may shake around and you may get dizzy and such. Now the crocodiles and, and American alligators, their, their, their brain is kind of elongated. It starts between their eyes and it comes back into a small globe and then it tapers off. So um, it's probably a little long in relation, but it's not very big either. So you always hear the idea that sometimes an alligator will go to sleep when you rub its belly. How many people have been close to an alligator to rub its belly? Well, when you roll an an this, you roll a crocodilian over, because I've done it with caimans and alligators, you would roll them over, and once you roll them over, that brain doesn't sit tightly in the brain cavity. And so the brain actually flops down on the spinal cord and temp pinches it, which temporarily paralyzes the animal. If you look back in the dinosaurs, you will also see, like on the T-Rex, the brain is only about that big. And it's about like a crocodilian brain. You know, being elongated, have a little bit of bulbous, and then and have a tail. It's a unique um, comparison. So, you know, so that's really neat.